In lesson 2.8, we're talking about multiplying using mental math. For these types of questions, we want to find the ice cream to the brownie or the peanut butter to the jelly with these types of numbers. We want to find easy numbers that we can work with that are super friendly when we stick them together so we can answer these questions quickly. Let's take a look at one and I'll let you know what I'm thinking about. Here we see a problem that has three numbers that we're multiplying together, 4 times 7 times 25. Now, at first glance, this might be a pretty daunting task to take on. Three numbers we're multiplying together, that can be quite challenging, especially if we break it up the wrong way. If we were to try and multiply 4 times 7 first, we'd end up with 28 times 25. And that's a really big math that we have to do. I'm not ready to do all that math. So there are some few tips that we can use and mental math strategies to make this a little bit easier on ourselves. We've talked about different properties that we can use, specifically the commutative property. And the commutative property tells us that we can flip numbers around in a multiplication problem and it still means the same thing. So let's move some of these numbers around so we can have two friendlier numbers next to each other. This might make things a little bit easier for us. So instead of starting with multiplying 4 times 7, I'm going to start with multiplying 4 times 25. Now that might seem like something that's a little bit challenging, but think about quarters. A quarter is worth 25 cents, and if you have four of them, how much money do you have? You have a dollar or 100 cents. So 4 times 25 is a pretty easy fact for us to remember, and it's one that's really easy for us to work with. When we multiply 4 times 25, we're going to get 100. And now all we have to do is multiply 100 times 7, and that's going to give us our final answer of 700. It was a lot easier for us to multiply 4 times 25 to start with and get a nice friendly number like 100 than it was to multiply 4 times 7 and get 28, and then multiply 28 times 25. While our product would be the same no matter how we multiplied, Finding that nice peanut butter and jelly numbers to stick together help us out and make it a lot easier for us to work this problem out. It allows us to do this problem mentally. Let's take a look at another problem. Here we have 6 times 10 times 10. And we notice that 6 times 10 is in parentheses to start with. Normally, order of operations would tell us that we need to do what's in the parentheses first. We can use another property here to make this problem easier for us. We're going to use the associative property. And the associative property tells us that we can change where our parentheses are and change which numbers we multiply first in a problem that's all multiplication or that's all addition. So let's go ahead and use that property. Now, by switching where our parentheses is, it tells us which number we're going to multiply first. So instead of multiplying 6 times 10 first, which would have still been pretty easy for us, we're going to go ahead and multiply 10 times 10, and that's going to give us 100. Now all we have to do is multiply that times 6, and we get our final product of 600. Moving those parentheses around and using the associative property made this problem easier for us to solve. It made it a problem we can solve using mental math. Let's take a look at another one. In this problem, we have 4 times 9 times 250. Now, if we were to start with multiplying 4 times 9 together, that would give us 36 times 250. This is a really big problem, and this isn't something that I'm ready to tackle yet. So I want to find a way to make this problem easier for me to solve. We talked about those nice, easy numbers to work together and how 25 and 4 were one of those friendly numbers, one of those peanut butter and jelly numbers or brownie and ice cream numbers that make it really easy and nice for us to work with. Here we see a 4, and we also see a 25 and 250. So those two numbers we want to multiply together first. So for this problem, we're going to use both the commutative property and the associative property. We're going to move some numbers around, and we're going to move our parentheses around, and it's going to make it a lot easier for us to solve this problem. Now, 4 times 25 was easy because that's like dealing with quarters. For 4 times 250, we're just adding an extra zero to it. So if 4 times 25 was 100, then 4 times 250 is 1,000. Now we're going to multiply that times 9, 
And again, that's a really easy problem for us to solve in the very end. 1,000 times 9 is going to give us 9,000 as our product. By moving some numbers around, it made it a lot easier for us to solve this problem. All we had to do was change where our parentheses were, and we also had to switch some numbers around, and this problem was a lot easier for us to solve. Here we see a pretty big problem. We see 24 times 250. Now for this problem, we can break numbers apart. We know from back here in the last problem we did that that 4 and 25 were really nice numbers to work with. So we want to be able to get those nice peanut butter and jelly numbers together. If we look here, I see the 25 but I don't see the four that I want to work with. I mean, I see it in the ones place, but that's going to be a little bit harder for us to break up by just breaking that number into 20 and four. So what I want to do is I want to think about a fact. I need to use my multiplication facts, and I need to think of a way that I can break the number 24 up so that I have that four to work with. So I need to take 24, and I need to break it into two pieces. I need to bit multiply four times something to give me 24, if I know my multiplication facts really well, I'm able to come up with that number. 4 times what gives me 24? That would be 6. So I'm going to rewrite this problem. Instead of saying 24 times 250, I'm going to rewrite it as 6 times 4 times 250. All I'm going to do here is add some parentheses in to remind me which one to multiply first. And here we see our peanut butter and jelly or brownie and ice cream numbers, those numbers that are really easy for me to work with. And I can solve this problem super easily. All I have to do is start by multiplying 4 times 250. 4 times 25 was 100. So 4 times 250 was 1,000. And then multiply it times 6, which is my last number right here. I'm going to bring that one down. 6 times 1,000 would give me 6,000. Now, if I were to multiply 24 times 250, I would get 6,000. Breaking it up and taking that step made this number a lot, this problem a lot easier for me to solve. All right, we have two more mental math strategies to look at, but remember those peanut butter and jelly numbers or the ice cream and brownie numbers, that 4 and that 25, those numbers go together really, really nicely. Other numbers that go together really nicely are 10 times 10. That would be a great number to find as well. All right, here's another strategy that we need to use. Again, I see this 25, and I see, ooh, that I really want to work with that number. That's a number that I like. Now, we've used the distributive property before, so this is a time where we can break that distributive property out and you put it to good use. I'm going to take my number, 625, and I'm going to break it up into 600 plus 25. And then I'm going to multiply that times 4. And I'm going to use the distributive property to break this up. So now I have 4 times 600 plus 4 times 25. I don't need to break this up all the way because right here I see my 4 and my 25, and I know that that's a nice number to work with. All I have left to do is work these two separate problems out and add them together. 4 times 600 is going to give me 2,400 plus 4 times 25 was 100. When I add these together, I get 2,500. Using the distributive property, especially when I see that 4 and that 25 can be really helpful for me and make these problems go a lot smoother. I also don't necessarily always have to break my number all the way apart. If I see that 25, that could be very, very helpful for me. Okay, let's take a look at the last way we can break these numbers apart, or the last mental math strategy. For this problem, we see 4 times 598. Now, we could multiply this, we could use the distributive property to break it up, but that's a pretty big number. And I don't know about you, but I don't really want to take all that effort into breaking this three-digit number up and multiplying all the pieces. So what I'm going to do instead is think about, well, what do I know about the number 598 and how close it is to 600? I know that it's two places away from 600. So I'm going to set up a new problem. I'm going to multiply 4 times 600 minus 2. Whatever is in this parentheses has to add up 
to the number I start with, the 598. 600 minus 2 gives me 598. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my distributive property, and I'm going to take my 4, and I'm going to multiply it by each of those pieces. 4 times 600. But instead of adding a plus sign, we see a subtraction sign right here. So I need to have a subtraction sign between these two problems when I use my distributive property. So I'm going to have 4 times 600 minus 4 times 2. And I'm going to solve each of those problems. 4 times 600 is going to give me 2,400. And 4 times 2 is going to give me 8. Now all I have to do is subtract 2,400 minus 8. Now this is all based on personal preference. If you like addition more than you like subtraction, well maybe you would prefer using the distributive property and breaking this up into 500 plus 90 plus 8. If you like subtraction and you want to do the subtraction of a larger number minus a one digit number, then maybe this is the way for you to go. When I subtract 2,400 minus 8, I get 2,392. So those are all of our different methods that we can use to help us with mental math. You've answered questions along the way. You have a few more questions to answer for me at the end. Remember, if you see that 4 and that 25, those are really nice numbers to work with. Remember, you can also take a number and you can break it apart by thinking about, ooh, what times what will give me this big number that I'm starting with to make it easier for me to multiply times my other number. Remember, you can use the commutative property and you can change the numbers around if, as long as they have all have multiplication signs between them to make it easier for you to work it out. And you can also use the associative property and change where your parentheses are. All of those methods will be really helpful when it comes to solving these problems. Okay, give those next few problems a shot, see how you do, and that's our lesson for today.